St. Louis City has started the 2023 season better than any expansion side in history. Five straight wins for a team that has never played together before and a coach that has never held a permanent manager role before this one. Today, we find out what is happening in the original Soccer City USA and the coaching decisions that are driving historic results. We have to start today by talking about the manager Bradley Carnell because this is a guy that has not held a senior manager role in the past. The highest he's been has been an assistant manager at the New York Red Bulls and the interim manager when Chris Armas was fired. And obviously the results don't happen without the players on the pitch. We'll cover some of the key figures and players for St. Louis City. And finally, we'll break down some of the scoring plays for Mound City and see how they are creating opportunities for themselves in attack and building into five straight victories for an expansion side. Let's start though with the man in charge, Bradley Carnell. He is a product of the New York Red Bull system and having played in Germany before, you can tell Carnell is implementing a Gegen pressing system. It's evident in the team style comparison so far in the 2023 season, because St. Louis is the fourth most direct team and the third fastest on the counter. The club is also tied for the second in turnovers resulting in a shot behind only Atlanta. The South African manager credits Ralph Ragnick and Jesse Marsh as critical coaches that helped him forge his path as a manager. It also has to be said that the club itself is focused on setting a vision that aligns with the club's ethos and one that the fans can get behind. We cannot discount the fact that the entire city and the club down to its core has bought into this system and it is having a tangible impact, especially with the raucous crowd at City Park. We're gonna look at some plays today where you might think that it was a gift to St. Louis to give them the ball, but great teams take advantage of other teams' mistakes. Once you force a turnover, you still need to put the ball in the back of the net. In every single game this season, the other team has seen more of the ball, but St. Louis City has created more opportunities, has had more shots on target, and a better expected goals percentage. What does this mean? Well, it means that St. Louis City is doing a great job when they do see the ball to put away their chances and maximize their ability to score. It's not just luck. It's because they're working hard in an efficient system. The success early on at this club can also be attributed to the bought-in approach from the sporting director down to the manager. St. Louis City's German sporting director, Lutz Spannensteel, cites Hoffenheim, where he worked in scouting and international relations as one of the main influences on playing style and mentality. Van den Stiel is also focused on building on the existing soccer culture in St. Louis and believes the players from the local area will be an ideal fit for the style of football the team wants to play. He told The Athletic, We are in the Midwest, and the Midwestern mentality is hardworking down to earth. You fight, you grind, you always do your best, you leave your heart and soul on that field until the 95th minute. We do want to have that blue collar approach. We want to have that hard-working approach. And that fits perfectly from that idea we created in Hoffenheim. An idea I learned and grew up with in football and fits very much to what St. Louis stands for. You may have heard me in the beginning of this video say that St. Louis is the original Soccer City USA. The first professional soccer league in the United States was actually started in St. Louis in 1907. And it has given us modern players like Tim Ream, Josh Sargent, and Becky Sauerbrunn. And did you know that in the 1950 World Cup, when the U.S. famously won 1-0 over England, six of those players were from St. Louis. But any club and manager can implement a high-pressing system. So what is St. Louis doing differently? One of the biggest things that stuck with me in an interview with Stanford head coach Jeremy Gunn was him talking about how you need to embody how your team wants to play. Essentially, if you want to play an intense style, you need to be an intense person. Your mentality and your character needs to match the way that you want your team to play. Carnell is equal parts motivator, intense, and ambition. For a young club looking to make an impact, there may not be anyone better suited for the job. Bradley cites his attitude as a player, nicknamed the Pitbull, even as a trialist at Stuttgart. But the manager can only train the players and get them on the pitch. So let's take a look at some of the key figures for St. Louis on the field. Zhao Klaus is a 26-year-old pressing forward 
I would compare him as an MLS version of Liverpool's Bobby Firmino. He has incredible anticipation, off the ball movement, and composure. In net, you probably know this guy, Roman Berkey. He is a 32 year old shot stopper, has incredible reflexes, is the leader of this squad, and he has great one on one ability as a goalkeeper. And the siding of the season, Edward Lowen strengths as a versatile midfielder, 26 years old. I would say he's the MLS version of Emil Forsberg at RB Leipzig or Andreas Perea at Fulham. We'll see later his long passing, his balance, and his ball striking ability. Speaking of players, I cannot believe the amount of journeymen that Carnell has been able to build into a force to be reckoned with. Do you remember the American forward prospect at Aston Villa, Indiana Vasilev, that failed at Villa, that failed at Miami? Well, he is now a box-to-box -box midfielder starting for the best team in Major League Soccer. Now let's break down some of the goals and chances created. Lots of goals and chances on set pieces is a sign of a well-coached team. The reason that is a correlation many people make is that set pieces are created equal for all teams. Every club gets opportunities from dead balls or corner kicks, and it's something you can train on the practice grounds as there are less variables than specific game situations. Set pieces fall into their own category outside of transition moments or rest formations, and if teams can be disciplined and precise with their training, you see more production from those moments. Let's take a look at St. Louis's third goal against Charlotte. The defender makes a mistake as he plays a back pass to the keeper. It goes to Zhao Klaus, who makes a really smart finish. Again, it looks like the team keeps passing back to St. Louis, and I'll concede, yes, that is essentially what's happening, but it keeps happening for a reason. The pressure coming from number seven on the back of the defender is expected, and it makes the Charlotte defender make a bad decision. I also love that the action right before this pass, the St. Louis attacker was walking back, but identified in a split second an opportunity to put smart pressure on the back of the defender, while Zhao Klaus was covering two different passing lanes to the goalkeeper and partner center back. It's small moments like those that look pedestrian and unfortunate for the opponent, but St. Louis made that play happen with their pressure, positioning, and work rate. The Jared Stroud goal against Austin is very similar. While yes, it was a huge mistake from the defender, you can tell that he needs to make a decision quickly because he knows that there's pressure coming from the back. And you know, I watch a lot of New York Red Bulls who play a very similar style, and to be honest, I don't know if Tom Barlow is finishing that chance. I will say this again and again, you make your own luck in this league. Now let's go with something different, the second goal against San Jose. There is no reason that Klaus should be getting on the end of this ball, but he does. And it's not all down to defenders' mistakes. This is all about the intense work rate, the never-say-die attitude of this squad that is fully bought into Carnell's vision and character. This goal embodies the saying of, you make your own luck. 99% of forwards don't continue that run, but Klaus is able to take advantage of the lax nature of defense and barrel straight through on goal. I've also noticed that Carnell will set up his team differently based on the way that he expects the opposition to set up. In the three matches that the opposition came out in a 4-3-3 variant, Carnell put his team with a 4-4-2, having Nico Giacchini be the striker that's partnered with Zhao Klaus. In the other matches, they've gone with a 4-2-3-1, leaving Giacchini on the bench and having Zhao Klaus as the singular forward. Playing a 4-4-2 against a 4-3-3 allows you to have one extra midfielder against your opponent, and your two strikers are able to cut the field in half with their pressing abilities. A lot of coaches are reluctant to not be the team that is dictating the play on the pitch, and this is one of the things that I love about Bradley Carnell. He's able to keep his team playing a similar style while still being adaptable to put a different setup that's best suited to your opponent. If you enjoyed this coverage of St. Louis City, make sure to subscribe to the channel. That lets me know that you want to see more videos just like this. And if you want to dive deeper into the world of soccer analysis, read more up on formation, styles of play, and positional ability, coaching decisions, all of that, my new book is out. The beautiful game decoded you can find it down below in the description and the top pinned comment thanks so much everyone for watching i'll see you next time on it's called soccer peace